that MJ. I don't care what you say. Ain't nobody like that MJ. Uh, the hustle sold separately. That You just ain't born with it. You just ain't born with it. So I remember when I first came out, I had Flojo was number one. I'd be in the studio in the summer. They come get me in the Jeep, top off. Yo, we going to Orchard Beach. It's chicks. I'd be like, nah, I got to work. And so shout out to Dap. That ain't Gap, that's Dap Madan. And so, on a day like today, so beautiful outside, I still got to come in here and vibe with the people, talk to the people. Uh, the hustle sold separately, everybody ain't got it in them. A man we gonna talk to tonight is accused of a lot of hustle. And I think we gonna have to get to know him and I'll let y'all be the judge or whatever, right? And so, uh, you know, here we deal with love. We deal with God. We don't deal with no hate. We deal with upliftment of the people. Um, and so that's how we that's how we do it. And so, you know, some people, man, yeah, you know, we, you know, let's get to it, man. Let me see where the band is at, man. Hold up. <laughs> let me get to it, man. Hold up. Let me see. It's so the book of Jose, what's up, Smitty? That's in November. That's a real revealing book. Uh, it's it's going to be something else. Um, I see what it is. And so... Tonight we should have a goodie, a real goodie, um, and we'll see what happens. But uh, you know, sometimes people gotta understand. Sometimes you could be an anchor to your loved ones and pull them down. And so when your loved ones is going through something, even if you might disagree, you could check them a little bit later. But you seem stressed out, high blood pressure up, going. Try to support at that moment. And sometimes that's all they need is for you to be like, nah, I got you. I got you. And so and sometimes, you know, you might add to the stress. And so uh today I said, man, we got to get on. Because the hustle don't stop. The hustle sold separately. Everybody ain't got it in them. But then everybody wonder why they ain't got everything they want. It's, 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 and it's as simple as that. Sending that invite out. If not, text on the thing. I'll tap you on the joint. Know what I'm saying? And so shout out to everybody. We're in the middle of the summer. It's Leo season. My birthday coming up in a couple of weeks. I ain't never scared. And so look, man, God has blessed me. My skin is still good. My teeth still in here. We still working. We still making money. Oh, there ain't nothing to be sad about. Um, we come up. We can fall. We'll come up. We'll fall. We'll come up. I was telling my brother Rich Play. I went out this morning. Five mics was good. And I told Rich, I said, yo, Rich, man, I've been getting money since I'm 14. That's all I know how to do. In fact, Forget rapping, forget this, that. I'm in the money business. That's what I do. Five mics was good. I'm in the money business. And, you know, the crazy thing is, uh, a while back when uh, I had the judge sentencing me, uh, and she told me, your newfound success is with your family and friends. Because she knew they had took all my money. Now, I could not argue with the woman because she had my life in her hands. But if it was anywhere else, I would have said, Miss, you got me. If I'm healthy and I'm out here, I'm going to get to the bag. I'm going to run it up. And so I'm in the money business. That's what I'm up to. I'm, I'm into getting money. It's obvious. <laughs> if, if you ain't... Uh, 
if you ain't see that, where you at, man? I mean, no, that ain't it. That's it. So we about to turn up in a second and have a real one. Because that's the only thing I know how to be. And so when you go, oh, the lights are on. And so when you go, uh, and you check out my interviews with Five Mites and Matt Hoffa and everything, and people tuned in and I always got millions of views because they know my perspective is always from a real place, always sincere, always from the heart. Never gimmicks. Um, and so that's the only way I know how to do. Never trying to jam nobody up. Always trying to celebrate success. Always trying to show love to the people, but I get to the realness, to the realness of it. And so, uh, waiting. I'm definitely waiting. Oh, me. Stacey, say what's up? She's a hit maker. Yeah, Stacey, you out there working with Diddy and all up. Fly on them every time I see you. You got that Gucci, that Louis, that Balenciaga. And so my new name is about to be Joey Savings. If this was the mafia, you know how they go Johnny two times or Fats, uh, Sammy. My new shit is going to be Joey Savings. And so how I'm going to mess you Success is by looking at my bank account and seeing some money in there piling up rather than just spending all the money you making as you're going. That's called living for the for the moment. And so my new thing is called I'm Joey Savings. So I'm, of course, I'm going to still ball out. Of course, I'm going to still do what I got to do. I don't know no other way. I don't know no other way. But the truth is, uh, we're going to try to save Joey Savings. We're going to try to save. You know what I'm saying? Make my, my, my people happy, you know. And it's important uh, that, when it's all said and done, you got some money, you know. And so a lot of us, we always keeping up with the Joneses, trying to be as fly as everybody else, spending some money we ain't even got. Uh, and so we get caught up in that shit. You know, sometimes you get in the way of yourself. And so like me, I got a, I got one of these, uh, I got one of these uh, buttons. I got a button. And you would be my best friend, my brother, my sister, whatever you want to call. If you steal from me and I catch you, that's it. It's not we could do about it. That's one thing we can't politic about. You can't bring the crew together. You can't bring, if you go and you know that you're somebody, that if you need anything, I'll go and I'll give it to you. And you don't. And you steal from me. It's nothing we can do about it. You understand what I'm saying? And now, we've been in this game too long to where we out here, you're paying people's lawyers, you're paying people's funeral, you this, this, that. I mean, how much is enough? How much is real, real? When you don't do it, they look at you like you're a fake one, even though you've been helping them with their bills their whole life. And so at the end of the day, it's fucked up because a guy with a good heart or a woman with a good heart, she looks at it and says, damn, like, did I even waste my time trying to look out for these people? I'm trying to see. I'm trying to see. This should be interesting, guys. If we pull this off, it should be interesting. Very interesting.
Say less. And so you got to understand, you know, some people will bring you down with them. They'll bring you down. They'll be an anchor. And so um, it's crazy, man, because I got a best friend. He's in jail, man. He's doing a whole lot of time, right? Sometimes he's the only guy I could talk to. He says, you want love, you can buy a dog. He said, because if you're waiting for these people to love you, you're in trouble. And what's sad is, it's no time for games. You only live once, now's the time. No time for games. <laughs> I see five mics. Yo, five. All right, so I can tell you what I'm doing. Pepsi, Alisa, new position. My girl, Alisa, she does Pepsi Stronger Together. Well, we just gave out 100,000 uh, in scholarships for the arts. And so where else do they do that? Empower to the patients, where we bring transparency. You know, there's a law that tells the hospitals they got to show you the price when you go to be to, to anything in the hospital. There's people who pay $300 for the same CAT scan someone else pays $4,000 for. I don't know where that's, wherever that's that. And so there's a law that shows the hospital, you gotta show the prices. Would you believe only 16%? That means 84% of the hospitals won't show the transparency, won't show the prices, won't show what you're paying. And so we go to the hospital and we sick and, you know, we think we're going to die or something's wrong. And so we just give in. And so that's what power to the patients do. And so all we try to do is just anything we could do in a positive level. You know, I open stores in the hood. You know, your favorite rappers, they run away from the hood. Not Fat Joe. As big as I am, as high profile. We open stores up in YC. Uh, number one store for the black and brown. We even got classrooms in the store. So kids after school, they get lessons and people come in and they talk to them. I met a brother yesterday uh, doing goodness for the, for the hood. He's, he was a, a slice of pizza or something for the teacher. You know, they, they big enough the teachers. They care about the students. And so uh, I met him, it was really beautiful. Uh, and uh, and we was talking. I got to do something with him because I'm always constantly trying to give back. Just like I tell you, the Pepsi Stronger Together, uh, we already gave out four scholarships, 25000 each one, um, for the arts, School of Excellence. You know, uh, very important. I mean, that's what we about. Hold up a second. Uh... I hope we get to it because it's starting to get played out. And so y'all want me to go off the top. <laughs> and so I've been running, man. Listen, I've been running. I went out there to St. Martin, right? And I'm not going to lie. Uh, I went out there, man. These people were so kind to me, so beautiful to me, treated me so good. I went out there, I, t I showed y'all, I prayed in the water for everybody, I prayed for you. Uh, and just, you know, it was just such a beautiful time out there, humbling, you know. And when I get out there, you know, yeah, there's kids out there in the motor scooter. The biggest crime is the scooter, the motor scooter. I'm tired of waiting at the light and they come out the sidewalks. It's the craziest thing, right? But I go out there, and whenever I go places, I ask them, how's the crime? How is it in the city? How is and they're like, yo, bro, if you steal from somebody, they'll probably come back at you. But it ain't like that out here. And it's crazy because I come to New York, I turn on the news. The problem is a lot of you guys don't watch the news. And so the minute I am addicted to the news, every channel, I watch... CNN, MSNBC, Fox, Eyewitness, everything. 
And the first thing I see is this young brother cutting a lady in the middle of Times Square with a razor blade. I mean, disgusting shit. And somebody in Queensbridge, God bless him, gets shot in the face playing basketball. This city, New York City, is out of fucking control. Don't know how to explain it to you in any other way. I've never seen no shit like this. Maybe they just are uh, showing it more, but it's out of fucking control. Seven people shot in three hours. This, this is not normal shit, guys. I know it's summertime. Summertime, people start busting. It's just, it's not right. It's just not right, right? And so uh, I pray all the time for everybody in the city. You know, I, the other day I was flying, the flight attendants told me they live in uh, Queens, I mean, um, Manhattan, and they got to take the train to the airport. They terrified to take the train. And so we, you know, I don't know what to tell you. I know that we need to get stronger. We need to talk to these kids. You know, yesterday I had a rough day. And uh, I was in the Lower East Side. I went to Casa Adela to get some food to bring to the crib. And I was texting. Right? But now, I was all messed up in my, I had a tough day. And so a cop pulls up. He sees me. Spanish young brother, black sister driving young. And he says, Yo, stop texting and driving. So I'm mad at so many other things that I turn around and tell a guy. He had one of them things on his head, like a mower. I don't know. So I told him, man, you should fucking cut that shit off the top of your head. This guy, the rage in this guy, his eyes. Yo, I'm trying to give you a break. I was completely wrong. Right? And, um... And if you hear about it, one of these cops know, just know I was wrong. I'm sorry. I had a rough day. But um, and I shouldn't have talked to you like that. And uh forgive me, man, because first time you ever seen Fat Joe, he was an asshole. And uh, but it was just a rough day. And you can see the other side. If another cop was going through the if cop was going through the same thing, they probably scream or take it out on somebody. And so you know, I you know, I answered back wrong. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate what you do. If you're a good cop and you ain't harassing people, you're doing the right thing, you seem like a cool brother, sorry. Sorry. Hey, yo, somebody call. Call Rich the Barber and ask him, uh, is, is homie coming, coming on? <laughs> there you go, the bitch. <laughs> All right, we good. Get out the room because I got to address you. What's up, man? What's Mr. up, Whitehead. bro? Uh, welcome, to the, welcome to the big, big show, brother. Um, uh, let me explain to everybody who you are because if they don't know. This is Mr. Whitehead. I met you a few times. Uh, this is the brother who got robbed in the church. Um... And 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 when I saw that, I knew it would end up here. I knew it would end up all around the world. I knew this was something that we're not used to seeing is people violating the church. And what I said the other day, I had real beef with this guy at one point that I really want to hurt. I needed to hurt him. It was a necessity. But he went to church. They baptized him. He went to church. And I knew that's off limits. And so, Bishop, uh, you're not, tell me, tell me, I'm, I'm going to go there with you, right? Where did you, tell us how you grew up. Where did you grow up? And how did you finally find Well. God? Big bro, uh, first, I want to thank you for allowing me to be on your platform. Uh, like you said, we met uh, many times, and um, I actually uh, honored you, um, you Papoose and, and, and Remy, at, at Chrissy's event. And um, I always respected you, man, and I thank 
um, you for, you know, supporting me and, and giving me an opportunity to speak to your people. So, I, you know, I was born and raised in Brooklyn, man. Crown Heights, Brooklyn, you know. And um, I'm from the dirt, man. I'm from the ground. You know, uh, at, at the age of six weeks old, my father was beat to death, strangled to death by 16 police officers because of the color of his skin. So I grew up without a father. You know, my mom, my grandmother, my sister raised me. And um, at the age of about 12, 13 years old, I moved to East New York, you know, and I also stayed in Brownsville, you know, Lexi Hughes Projects. So, you know, I'm, I'm, from, I'm from the dirt, Joe. You know, I'm from the bottom. Okay, so you grew up in Brooklyn. Now, when you get, and I'm gonna break this down to you, right? Cause, Cause me and you talked a little the other day and we had a beautiful conversation, right? See, I don't play with God, right? That's the whole thing. Now, I believe I wanna be a preacher one day. I believe I wanna give the word of God. The problem is I'm too much of a sinner. And I know it. And so I say to myself, yo, I can't play with God. God is almighty. He sees everything, right? So when that happens to you, I'm watching the news. I see it on the news. The first thing they say is, controversial bishop did five years for scamming people. He did five years in jail. This I mean, it went straight for your juggler off rip, your credibility the minute on TV, right? And so we all know that you could be born again or whatever. Um, how did you get yourself jammed up and did that five years? And I just want to know, when was the moment? How did it happen that you said, I'm going to become a bishop and spread the Well, you know, growing up, man, you know, you know, um, you out here and you know you know you you got friends from the streets you know what i mean and um when that case came about in 2004 um i was arrested in 2006 and it was like soft allegations however i was arrested in the racist the most racist county in the country suffolk county and um yeah and you know joe and hopefully you know we do this again but you know they they put together fake search warrants. They lied in motion saying that they didn't have no evidence. Um, I, got, I got five affidavits from five different attorneys who represented me that stated that the DA hid evidence to convict me. Um, I was also sentenced to crimes that I was found not guilty of. I was railroaded, you know what I mean? And um, as far as the grand lossity and identity theft, you know, um, nothing was taken. It, um, it was all attempted to be taken and they trumped up charges against me because that was the first identity theft case to ever be tried in Suffolk County. So they had a point to prove, you know, um, one of the things that they did was um, I was living in Jersey at the time and Long Island wanted me so bad that they wrote an affidavit on their behalf, came to New Jersey gave New Jersey the affidavit stating that they wanted to arrest me. New Jersey used that affidavit for their application to the judge. And New York came out to my house, put everything in garbage bags, put it in their trunk, and drove it back to New York. So nobody don't even know where this stuff came mm -hmm. from. And that's why they hid all the evidence from my attorneys. That's why they hit the search warrants from my attorneys because they knew that it would have been fruit to the poisonous tree. But I can go on and on. I was. No, I didn't cop out. Cop out. out. You did five. So you, you was found guilty. Did six you years. did five years in jail. Mm -hmm. Six years. So you're in jail, Brooklyn. It's going down. You know what it is in jail. Um, The point I'm trying to get to is. How did you become a bishop? What came in your life that said, yo? So, so Joe, Lord. I was, you know, my grandmother, my mom always brought me to church. But before I went to the penitentiary, um, I was going on a year as ordained as a minister, right? So, you know, I wasn't getting in trouble or nothing like that. I was fighting the case, but I also owned my own mortgage, mortgage firm at the time. I was on Wall Street. I had employees. I had about 12 employees. I moved to the Empire State Building because my friends from FUBU, 
was there. So I moved over there and they was on the 67th floor and I was on the 57th floor, you know? And um, so, you know, I had my own mortgage firm. I purchased, I bought my own franchise and I was winning. I had my own real estate firm and um, all of this stuff hit, but I was already a minister um, a, a year uh, before I was found guilty. So when I went upstate, I was already a minister. I was already changing my life. You know, um, when I went upstate, you know, I had to, you know, pound a few people out. You know, I'm going to keep it real with you, you know, because that, that's, <laughs> that, that's, that's all they respected, you know? Part of the thing, that's the only thing they respect. So you was a minister pounding guys right, out. Right, right. They called me preacher. Anybody that know, I was in Sing Sing Correctional Facility, man. And they know preacher from Brooklyn. I was benching 495. I was 192. And I was huge and I boxed. So, you know, it's like the Bible says that I can lay hands. So sometimes I had to lay these hands, you know, that that was just what it was. You know what I'm saying, Joe? But I was. <laughs> yeah. And you was new. Nah, nah, wasn't nah, no nah, 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 nah. I grew up in Brooklyn. Um, Joe, I, we wasn't, I wasn't used to that, man. Like the bloods, the, you know, those are the young homies and everything. But I've never been in the gang in my life, you know. And they respected us, you know, and we all had our sections and I was with, the, you know, we, I was with the Brooklyn section and we was, you know, we was heavy. But, um, you know, so my life, my life always was always changing, man. And even when I was in there, I was reading the Bible. I was studying the Bible. I was doing what I had to do. And when I came home, I came home off a reversal. Um, I came off of a reversal. And um, when I came home, you know, I was already a minister. And I just kept pushing. I got ordained as a pastor. Um, and I started my church as a community organization. I was giving uh, turkeys and toys away every year and doing big community events and um, bringing the youth together, stop the violence. That's just what I was doing. And my main thing, I just jumped right into politics. And I would fund these things by myself or I would bring other artists in and they would donate turkeys, they would donate clothes and I would bring healing to the, to the community. And that's how I started my church, Leaders of Tomorrow International Ministries. And a lot of the pastors and the preachers, they didn't like my style because um, I was just different. See, my style, Joe, is this. Now, now, mm -hmm. Hold up, hold up, hold up, Bishop, right? Nope. <laughs> so now, you Gucci this, you Louis that. Uh, you also, I mean, I look at you, you look like a rapper. I've seen pictures of you. When it happened to you, I've seen 10,000 pictures with you in Gucci bubbles, suits, this, this, that. Um, and so you represent a poor neighborhood, right? And this has been something, remember, it's almost like dead presidents when homeboy was the preacher, but he had the Cadillac outside. And so everybody looks at that two ways. Could something be going on with the bishop? Um, what is he really doing? Or is it cool for your bishop or your pastor to be that flashy or be that fly? I've had some parishioners, I had some people tell me, I want my pastor in the Bentley. I want my pastor to be fly. I've heard them. People tell me this, right? And But what is it to you, uh, when you see how people look at you and they say, man, this man is preaching to people that ain't got no money in the hood, but he got a million dollars in jury on. So you can see where people are looking for you. And you know better, you preaching the word of God. You know some people are good for you. Some people want your best interest. And some people are looking at you. And in Spanish, we call this mal de ojo, with a bad eye. You know, um, so why do you take, take the approach of being that flashy and having that type of jury when you preach well, to poor Joe, people. Well, first of all, I don't think I'm preaching to poor people. That's number one, you know, and my church is not poor. You know, there's young ladies in there with red bottoms, Gucci bags, Gucci this, Gucci that. They're not poor. I have a lot of young people that just purchased their own houses. Uh, was it last year? I think three or four of my members purchased their first house. Like, like my church is prosperity. So when it's like every, like, when we think about church, we think about poor. But when we think about the Jewish synagogues, we think about wealth. Why, why is it like that? It's such a stigma. You know what I mean? And everybody said that I'm, I, I'm in a poor neighborhood. I'm not in a poor neighborhood. I'm in a neighborhood where there's mainly one family houses that people own. 
right? And it, it, it's, it's, it's like we, as an urban community, have a bad name that church preaching to poor people, preaching to less fortunate people. And I think me, I represent a generation that, you know, if you want to wear Fendi, you can still love Jesus. You know, like Joe, you said you want to be a preacher one day. So why do you got to put down your Gucci, right? If that's you, that's you, right? And I can't change who I am because of what people say traditional, traditionally I'm supposed to look like. That's not me. You can't fit me in a box that I can't fit in. So uh, where my church is, is not poor, number one. And if it was poor, I'm still going to wear what I want to wear. I'm still going to drive what I want to drive because now if I'm your shepherd, I want you to be better than me, right? Why do I have to come into in something that's not me, right? Just to please people. I always say this, Joe. I'd rather be an enemy of, enemy of man than an enemy of God any day. And I teach people, right, that I'm not, if you look at, <laughs> Joe, if you look at my sermons, I'm not a prosperity preacher. I'm not a preacher that sit here and say, oh, the Lord is going to bless you. I need you to give me $1,000 and the Lord is going to, I don't, I, I don't preach that. I teach, all right? My church I teach. I teach the biblical academic and how to be disciplined in understanding Jesus Christ. I give you the instruments. I give you the literature. I teach linguistics of the Bible, the language of the Bible. Language is how you communicate through the community of the Bible. This is what I teach. Now, if y'all go on my page and y'all see me hitting people in the head and say, ah, oh, and give me a thousand dollars and get, you will never see that. In my church, we pass an offering around one time. It's for tithes and seeds. That's it. That's it. Whatever you give, you give. I don't press nobody. All you have to do is look at my ministry. I'm not on salary, Joe. And at the end of the day, we have this, this, this. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, bitch. You're not on salary, meaning you don't take no, no. money that's received in the church? No. So your money made from other yes. businesses and other yes agencies. oh so you're saying you're not taking no money from the church you make your money as a businessman an entrepreneur yes. outside of the church could you tell us i'm, about a, real some estate, of these I'm a real estate investor Did i'm you? a real estate investor i own two blocks i own a community i own a 48 unit um um, um complex i own i own properties I, I, I've i been doing real estate over 20 years. I Joe, I teach free real estate classes that cost $5,000 a, sem a semester, right? I teach about zoning. I teach about uh, buying and flipping property. I teach about hard money. I teach about um, zoning. I teach about the academic of real estate. Like, I do this. So, therefore, this is what I do. I do that, and I have other business ventures that I invest in. I don't take money from the church. I don't have to take money from the church. Right? They say, oh, he has a Rolls Royce. My church can't afford my Rolls Royce because I'm still building. I have a community and I have a church of this generation. And I, at the end of the day, if you come to this generation with your hand out, they're going to go the other way. They're going to go the other way. So I don't pressure my people. I don't pressure my church to give. Okay, Bishop. Now, this is where the distrust comes from when people who don't trust you comes from. I'm going to tell you where, right? Um, besides you flashy, I get it. I wear